Welcome to Shorty Supercoach. What's going on, guys? My apologies. My apologies. I have been a bit slack on the upload. I think it's been four, maybe five days since I uploaded. So I do apologize. You guys know I like to upload every couple of days for you guys if I can. And um, when was the Sydney preview? Four days ago. I did this short. I was... um. Maybe YouTube shorts only work if they're less than 30 sec- uh, 60 seconds because I did this one and that went into the shorts. So I'm not too sure. If you've got TikTok, feel free to check me out. But um, yeah, my apologies. I've been, for those that don't know, I've started a new job just in student well-being full time. Um, so yeah, just sort of starting the new role. I'm, yeah, it's just been a big week. Like, I've just really sort of invested most of my time into that. And, um, yeah, just once you get a bit of gym and, and, you know, catch up with the housemates and stuff, I've I've found it a bit trickier to uh, find the time to upload. But don't fear, I'll sort my life out soon enough. There's definitely going to be plenty of opportunities for me to do videos throughout the week. Just got to find the right balance. I've, I've definitely been a bit, you know, when you start a new job and you just thrown information and a couple of days I got home and I was just like oh, I'm just gonna chill holy shit I'm I'm cooked so it's Thursday now it's been a really positive week like I've learned so much which has been awesome um but yeah got those Friday feels coming up got the weekend off you know Shorty's been working Sundays for like a year and a half now no Sundays now baby so that's gonna be super nice but yeah, tennis is done and dusted. Looking forward to the cricket over in India, Feb 9. But what we really care about is footy is starting to get rolling. Players are all on camps. They're all looking fit. They're all looking great. Best preseason ever, they say. But we're going to sift through the real business here. And we're going to look at West Coast. I've nearly done these club-by-club club previews. Nearly done. It's taken me a while. But I'll upload them as a full playlist. If you want to check out your club or another club, they should be in a playlist or just sift through those videos. But I would love to hear your thoughts on what videos you'd like to see me do after the previews because they sort of give me a bit of structure and um, direction in what I actually do. But yeah, I would love to see your or hear your thoughts on what you would like to see um, in amongst my normal content that I do each and every year. So, uh, But yeah, definitely going to try and upload at least every three days just got to find that rhythm so bear with me let's get stuck into it and I just wanted to firstly touch on as you can see I've got Elliot Yo and Oscar Allen there to talk about West Coast are going to struggle there's no doubt about it and I just wanted to quickly reference off the top a few players I didn't think they were worthwhile actually talking about um, and I will end with a couple of rookies which I don't normally do but I just sort of feel the video out a bit nicer I don't think we're going to look at Shannon Hearn great year last year but we're not going to start him are we Nick Nat I mean I know he's averaged some really good numbers I've seen occasional teams with him but I just think you know look at that eight games and we know his body has probably been more durable than we thought but even still I don't see any reason to start Nick Nat you know Witherden's been a constant tease and then you've got these three mids that have been great for so many years average 105 plus in their time but i think that time is over so i just wanted to talk about those guys because i oh, just in case you were wondering about it but i will talk about at some stage this lad and i'll also finish the video i, I don't normally do um jimmy typen's going well there i don't normally do drafty talk but there's only a couple of eagles, so I will do that. But um, yes, let's get stuck into it. So Elliot Yo, of course, has played some great footy. We all know that. But his body has also let him down terribly. Now, last year, I actually picked up a, him up in draft because he returned really nicely off half back. He had some really nice rebound 50s, as you can see here, 88, 102 and then was subbed off um, with a 63. So it was tracking along pretty nicely again. So it sees him at a pretty good price. I'm just going to see, and I'll be really interested to see what ownership he's at too. Because I, honestly, he's half a chance for my team. He really is. God, that's some good internet there. That's really going nicely. But 
I just want to see where he's been training. If he's off half back, great. If he's through the midfield, great. Um, let's have a look at that article. Fuck, man, he's still loading. Jesus, Jesus Christ. So, my overall thoughts are, yeah, pretty risky. But the thing is, right? The thing is, guys, thirty-five or thirty-six trades, however many is, fucking too many. That means you can afford to have Elliot Yo in your team, and if he gets injured in round seven, who cares? Because if you've got faith in his role and ability to score points, then that's okay. Gone are the days where trades are absolute gold. This is a ridiculous set. We go. Just, just loaded straight away. Might have logged myself out here. How do I manage to do this? Classic. Oh, no, nice. So... Let's have a look, Elliot. What I, I'll, I'll guess, uh, 24%. 38? Wow. All right. And what was his price? 337. So, yeah, look, it's a juicy, juicy price for a guy who, as we know, has averaged great numbers. And the fact is, if you're ever going to take a risk on a player that's a mid-pricer, you only have to have faith in their scoring. You don't want to be... Oh, fuck, why'd I do that? I always think it's better off to roll the dice on their body. If they last six weeks, if they last ten weeks, great. If they last two, then that's just stiff luck. It was probably worth the risk. But if you know that they can score, you don't want to have the combination of, fuck, if he gets fit and he gets this roll and, gee, he could score. No, we know if Elliot Yo is fit, he scores. So that's what we want to watch closely. It has been a while. I mean, look at this. A long time since he's played consistent footy. I don't expect him to average three figures. But all we need is a solid 90, a good preseason. He has to be on your watch list. So what do we got going on here? Bit of Campbell Chesser chat. We love that. Don't they normally put the names in bold? Oh, gosh. Make me control F. What was that top one? Elliot Yo might spend more time in the back line. Totally fine. Using Elliot Yo in a similar role. Yo has been training high level. Yeah, right. So, look, plain and simple for me, if Elliot Yo doesn't have any injuries for the rest of the preseason, gets to round one fully fit, he'll be in my team. Because we saw him play great footy off half back. He looked good as gold. Um, so he had those three games. I just want to see what time of ground that 63 or whatever it was. 40%. So he was flying. Absolutely flying. So I think Elliot Yo is a lock to average in the 90s if he's fit. And at 337, I think he's a great option for our side. But the big kicker is, can he string some footy together? So that is where we will make our money. Moving over to Oscar Allen. Um, look, he's an interesting one too. Similar to Yo in the fact that he's got to get his body right. I've got less faith in him. Obviously, a cheaper price, but there's a few elements in there that, that make it a little less appealing um, for me, and that's, if I could get my typing right here, 210. So he's at a nice price, but what do we got? 18%. I think with Allen, you got the body concern. you got the key forward concern. And you've got the, we've never really seen him score that great before concern. We've seen him go all right. I mean, I think it was in 2020, he might have started the season like Wayne Carey. Maybe not quite Wayne Carey, but, you know, it was through this patch here. He really caught fire with some of these numbers for about a month of pretty good footy. Um, maybe, did he start the year well, 21? There was a year that he started like absolute fire. Uh, don't know when it was. I guess he kicked four. And then, yeah, look, the worry for me is that he's never really scored, but neither did Charlie Kerno, and I guess that's kind of the model. You're probably looking at him going, can he be a really good key forward in a weak team, but can he kick 40-plus goals, just get us a bunch of 70s, the occasional 110 when he kicks five. He'll have a 50-odd every now and then, but um, it's all about the body for mine. I, I'm probably less interested in picking Allen. I think the fact is that we've got a few pretty handy options in that kind of price range for the forward line. Some of them draftees, um, some of them blokes like um, you got McLean there. He's definitely a good option, and, and Filippo, and, and there'll be others that I've sort of forgotten about. 
So I'm not as excited to pick him, but it's all there for you. He's cheap. He's going to be a number one key forward. He's returning off a major injury. So there's a hell of a lot of risk there. There's a lot of money to make if he's good enough. But at this point in time, unless he really puts himself on the map through preseason, I'm, I'm pretty happy to steer clear. I'm not even sure if he's been going on the track well or not or where he's at. Um, let's have a look. Not super coach. Returning forward, ready to step up three weeks ago as high hopes for Eagles. Yeah, so look, at this point, it's probably a no for me. He'd really have to impress me. And I just wanted to talk about these guys. I mean, Jimby will talk a bit more when I discuss draftees, but by all reports, traveling real nicely, big body, high draft pick, can play halfback, can play midfield. So he's got some variety in his game. I wouldn't be surprised if he's playing round one. Pretty nice price. Could be in your back lines for sure. And Chess is the one I really like because he. we would have been talking about him debuting last year if it wasn't for the fact that he copped that massive injury and then it didn't play a game so he's at a beautiful price was a first round draft pick if my memory serves me correct yep number 14 and he was a bit of a real exciting one you know i remember hearing you know he's he's creative he's got that flair he's ready to go which we always hear from about all the players but i just think he could be a guy that west coast will be looking to draft and blood these type of players so they sort of stay tucked away over there in WA. I don't always hear as much info over here in Victoria, but I think Chesser, Jimby, massive chances for round one. Yo, huge chance for my team. Just got to check that body out. And um, Alan, he'd have to do a bit to impress. But at this stage, the Eagles are looking like they'll be a pretty tough year ahead and maybe not a stack of super coach love, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on who you're picking at the Eagles. At this point, I've only got a couple of guys down back, maybe a third. But uh, yeah, pretty slim pickings for the Eagles. But let me know. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers, guys.